Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Care Manager. My name is Ryan, and I'm joined with Teresa, our Director of Care Management. The both of us work for Easy Living. We're a home care and care management agency serving the Tampa Bay area for over 20 years, uh, Pinellas, Pasco, and Hillsborough counties. Every week, we do a video series about care management and home care services, and we usually take general questions of clients that we've had or people that have reached out and also different things that we're noticing in our business and how things are changing. We try to answer those questions and try to provide more information for you, your family, or your clients. So this week we actually kind of have a, uh, a general question that we've, something that we've noticed that was actually brought up by our registered nurse, Rhonda. So um, the question is uh, that we got from one of our families um, is my mom uh, had a caregiver coming into her home to help her with chores, bathing, errands, and some uh, companionship. Uh, she canceled it when COVID-19 hit, and that was okay because I had to stop working, so I was able to help out more. Now that I'm going back to work, she's still afraid to have a caregiver come into the home. Is it safe, and what precautions uh, should we take? Uh, Ryan, that's a great question. Um, so yes, I know our organization, uh, we are following the CDC guidelines so all of our caregivers, when they go into a home, of course, they're wearing a mask. They, upon arrival, they immediately wash their hands. Um, if they're, and then they'll disinfect, not just clean, but disinfect the area that the caregiver and the client will be in for the day. Sure. Um, they will also, if they're providing care, I think the, the lady that you talked about said that, they assist with bathing. So if she's providing any personal care, of course they're gonna wear gloves. They would have done that anyway. Sure. Um, and then when they're not providing care, they will stay, they'll still do the social distancing so that they're not, you know, let's say it's an eight hour shift for eight hours a day, they're not sitting right next to mom or dad or whomever. Yeah. But when they're providing care, they'll take all those precautions. So. What we tell what we tell our clients is if the caregiver doesn't come in and go wash their hands immediately, you need to tell them to do that. We had one lady, she's like, they're just running through paper towels left and right. That's her complaint. So it's like, well, okay, but, but that's because they're washing their hands often. So that's yeah. a good problem to have. I'll, I'll send her another roll of paper towels if I have to. <laughs> so, but, um, but yeah, because what what i have noticed and the point that i've been trying to make during this whole um everybody being so isolated and being staying at home is unfortunately a lot of our seniors have have lived this way they've lived isolate they've been isolated uh just to the nature of of what's going on in their lives they're not getting out as much they're not driving as much so having that companionship coming in you know daily or a couple of times a week it's it's wonderful for the client because they say now that you know social isolation is worse for an elderly cognitively than than you know a poor diet than not exercising and, yeah. and we've noticed our clients, some of them are declining, it seems like more, if they're isolated. Yeah, so and that's I something you, you guys have dealt with as like a regular care management services too. Even before COVID, you know, you guys were, you know, always, I think a lot of times, especially when families were out of the state or out of the area and they couldn't see their loved one, um, that's something that they were always concerned about too, is that isolation. Exactly. and and. Uh, regards to the care management and the role that we would play is uh, for instance I was at a client's home yesterday and the caregiver was trying to come up with some ideas well what I don't know what to do you know sometimes you just can't you're not in a creative mode you can't think well what can I do yeah. so we had to we had, I asked the family to go ahead and put together um, uh, boxes, idea boxes, activity boxes. So the caregiver can just go to an activity box and sit down with them. You know, maybe it's uh, old wedding pictures. Maybe it's a sensory stimulation, depending on the level or the needs of the client. But mm -hmm. trying to be creative and think outside the box and putting together an activity box might be just the thing to do. That's a great idea. And, um, you know, that's what 
it makes the care management service is so great is that you guys are, are really thinking outside the box. You're putting yourselves in those shoes of those, those families and those clients and, um, you know, not thinking so much on the clinical mind, but thinking about the holistic and, and approach and the whole, the whole ver view, uh, a bird's eye view of what the client is really going to need to make them, um, you know, function better. Exactly. And I always have, um, care managers focus on purposeful activities. Yes. You know, you don't want just an activity, you know, what's important to that client? You know, mm -hmm. what's something that they used to do previously? Um, a lot of times we'll find that, you know, if it was something that they did well before, let's say painting, and I may have used this as an example before, it may frustrate them if you try to break out their, their painting supplies and get them to paint again, it may frustrate them because they realize I just can't do what I, I was able to do before. Sure. But to get them to teach the caregiver oh, how to yeah. paint, that's, that that's... is, you know, if that's purposeful, you know, it, when you're, when the caregivers are in the kitchen helping with um, a meal, can you show me, tell me about that family recipe that you were talking about. Tell, mm -hmm. let's make that. Can you teach me how to make that? That's, that's purposeful activities. And that's what we really try to focus on. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great suggestion. You know, like I, said, I think are... I got a little sidetracked from the initial question, you know, regarding bringing the caregivers back, but I think it's very important to bring them back and to make sure that they're safe. Absolutely. Um, following all the, the CDC guidelines. We also, before, before a caregiver can actually clock in, they have to answer every day the set questions that uh, the, CDC, the CDC requires, such as, have they been outside the United States? Have they, are they running a fever? They need to take their temperature every day. Mm -hmm. um, do they have shortness of breath, coughing, sneezing? Are, is there somebody in their household that has tested positive? If they answer yes to any of these, they can't go to work that day. They need to Absolutely. notify our office. And that's what that's great about our technology and what um, you know our caregiver app has, and that, and that prompts them before they, they check in, and then it automatically flags it, and, and everyone's alerted at that point in time. So we can make exactly, that and point in time, so. we are also Ryan. We're tracking all of the facilities, assisted living facilities, and nursing facilities that have um, either a, a caregiver or residents with that have tested positive. We are tracking that to make sure if we have a caregiver that is working in a facility with a, that has been tested positive, not the caregiver, but somebody else in that building, sure. we want to know so we can mitigate any risk. We don't want to send them out to an, somebody else's home. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, like I said, what the great part about with easy living is like, I think since the beginning before it really became, you know, quote unquote pandemic, um, we've been we've been taking the protocols and the steps ahead of time and utilizing technology to make sure that we are tracking for not only our caregivers but for our clients and their families too to make sure we're we're not putting anyone at risk. Exactly. Awesome. Well, thanks, Teresa, so much again for always for great insight. I really appreciate your time and uh, thank you, everyone else, for joining. Um, if there's any kind of questions you would like to ask, uh, please put it in the comment section below, and or you can visit our website and uh, submit a request on there. Our website is www.easylivingfl.com. Thank you so much for joining. Teresa, thank you again as always, and I hope everyone has a great day.